not me. <laughs> gotcha. We are now. <laughs> well, obviously anatomy is a big part. So, you know, your anatomy classes, I mean, that's, that's kind of the, uh, the baseline for most of what we do. Um, but, you know, you know, some other things is, I don't know if there's as many in high school. I don't know if I took as many in high school, but, you know, psychology classes, that's a really good one to do. You know, like when you're, when you're looking at um, just how people deal with injuries, how people, you know, um, uh, deal with overcoming types of things. I mean, I think that's an important piece as well. Um, but, you know, it, when you get into college, I mean, it's, you know, your chemistries, your physics, you have to, those are the tough classes that you have to take. Um, but, you know, your anatomy and physiology is your baseline. Biology, your sciences, for sure. And then, you know, we talk about different uh, specialties and things like that. Uh, you know, when you're, when you're in the field, there's so many different uh, settings you can be in. You know, the, the setting that I'm in every day is the outpatient setting. So it's, you know, people come to the clinic and, you know, most people are, um, uh, you know, higher level probably like where they can walk in unless they're, you know, on braces or, uh, you know, crutches or, you know, walkers, different things like that, um, all the way into, you know, sports, jumping, landing, all that sort of thing. But, you know, you have hospital settings, rehab uh, units that you can be in, nursing homes, um, home health, where you go to people's houses and, and, and work with them there. And then uh, I used to always joke around, but, you know, about seeing people from home, but that's a, that's a thing now, you know, the telehealth, telemedicine. And so just like this, this avenue of connecting with patients, you can even do that as well. And then Lori, you talked about, you know, which, uh, you know, education um, that you, that you have to have for sure. You know, it, it is a, it is a long road. So you have to be realistic that, you know, you, you like school enough that you, you're going to go for a while because it does take you, uh, you know, you have to have an undergrad degree, which average it takes you, you know, four years um, to get that. And then physical therapy school is also three years on top of that. So it's a doctorate degree. Um, so then you get out as, as uh, a doctor of physical therapy would be the degree that you would have. As far as like you said, you're on the more of the administrative side, is there any skills when you're looking to hire a specific person? Um, if you do any hiring that um, a, like a shoe in, you know, like that's a really good skill to have or things that you would be like, ah, yeah, this person is probably not the right person for this job. Yeah, good question. Um, you know, I think it, it goes right back into that. Um, yeah, I want to see how somebody interacts, how they, uh, you know, how they, how they enjoy just chatting with people. You know, it's, I, I am on the administrative side, but I still do see patients that I've seen for years. And, and it's kind of funny because I joke around like they're, I've, I've seen them for so many years now, they're my friends, you know, and so you kind of interact with them and, and uh, being able to perceive that with people, like, you know, when you're, when you're interviewing um, a candidate for the job, it's kind of the same thing as interviewing a patient too. You know, you're, um, you know, how are you interviewing that patient? How are you, um, you know, connecting with them and then kind of seeing what their uh, goals are, you know, that sort of thing. And you can see that when you're, you know, when I, when I interview people as well. Uh, but then, uh, let's see, you know, it's a, it, it's a demanding, you know, if you're looking at uh, the, the hours or different things like that, sometimes it is demanding because you're working on, on schedules. It's, you know, we talk about flexibility and work, uh, but you do have a schedule that people come in and, and your, 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 your day is, is booked. You know, you kind of have that uh, scheduled appointment time. So people need to be realistic on that as well. Um, I think we have a question from Ms. Prince. 
Is there a big difference between being a physical therapist versus a chiropractor is the question. So I think if you go to, you know, different offices, I think um, it's a different degree path for sure. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's governed by, you know, a different path, different, um, you know, school completely like chiropractic school versus physical therapy school. But, you know, when you're going into a clinic, I think if you go to five physical therapists and you go to five different chiropractic offices, some of them may look really similar and some of them may look very different. And sometimes that's a treatment approach and sometimes that's a setting approach. Um, there's definitely a carryover between, you know, certain, you know, whether you say uh, we both treat the spine or, but we may treat it a little differently. You know, there may be uh, some same uh, type of ways that you, you have the same treatment approach, but you know, whether that's uh, exercise, manual therapy, uh, dry needling, different things like that. Um, but, but ultimately it, it, it really just depends on the chiropractor and the physical therapist. Let's show it to you. So I think it, you know, it, it depends on your setting. You know, there's going to be, uh, uh, you know, if you're in an outpatient setting or if you're in a nursing home, the, the pay is going to be different or a home health setting, uh, the pay is going to be different. Uh, you, you know, you can expect there's going to be a, a, probably a big range. I think the median is 80, um, something like that. You may not make that right off the bat, but, you know, I think that's the median range. Um, I think we had another question. What are those things that you enjoy about PT and what are the things that are most challenging for you? So, I mean, I, for me, my favorite thing is just getting to hang out with people every day. <laughs> you know, I think, um, I think when you see people overcome obstacles and you help them along the way, that's a super cool thing. You know, you see, uh, I just saw the, I was watching the football game the other night and it showed Alex Smith. I don't know if any of you saw the, his horrific injury several years ago and he, he got an infection in his leg and uh, it was an incredible comeback, but um, that's kind of like what a physical therapist would do. You know, some people, they, they stick out more than others, but, you know, sometimes it's, you know, you look at something that somebody overcomes a, a huge obstacle and they go back and play professional sports, um, but it's just as important somebody that wants to go to the mailbox and they can't walk across the, you know, their driveway. And if, if you can make that life-changing difference, I think that's pretty rewarding for sure. Um, and then, you know, it, and just encourage people to do more than they thought they could even before they walked in the door. I think that's a, that's a really cool aspect of the job. Um, we have another question. What universities in Arkansas provide degrees for this field? So used to, it was only uh, UCA, University of Central Arkansas, but now there's uh, UAMS right here in our back door um, in Fayetteville. There is Harding in Searcy. There's Arkansas State uh, in Jonesboro. And then there is um, the new the new one in Fort Smith as well. So um, the I forgot the name now. I should know this, but but there's just one that opened up in Fort Smith. So also another pretty local one. So you have a lot of options now um, versus used to. There was only one or two um, schools that would offer it. Okay, and then we had what is the main difference between PT and PTA? Okay. Good question. So uh, we do have a PTA program here also in, in Bentonville, but um, it's, uh, you know, the main difference is, is like as a, as a physical therapist, so physical therapist and then physical therapist assistant, um, physical therapist, you know, the, the path is going to be a little longer. So PTA, if you didn't want to go to school as long, that's definitely a good option as well, because um, you can get out in a couple of years versus seven. Uh, the main difference is, is probably going to be your evaluation. Uh, so if somebody comes in, if a patient comes in uh, 
as a physical therapist, you're going to do the evaluation, the initial visit, um, kind of do the full evaluation of kind of what's going on with them. Um, the follow-up visits with a PT and a PTA look similar um, because a PTA can still, you know, uh, follow up with, you know, daily visits, different things like that. They just can't do that initial visit and then that, that reevaluation type type thing, more of the, uh, uh, you know, more in-depth uh, evaluation is, is essentially the difference. Do you know about the pay um, scale for like a PTA? Do you know that one? I don't really know 100% what the range is on that. But um, that, I mean, that would be so, so something to think about with, you know, considering the differences in those is, you know, just just looking at how long you have to go to school for sure. Um, looking at how, you know, long term, how that's going to change what you do um, in your job. And then obviously it's expensive to go to school too. And it's not, it's not cheap to go to school for that long. And so I think that's, a, that's a also a realistic consideration that you know, students should also take when they're considering this field. And the cost effectiveness of going PTA versus PT would be you know, a, a consideration there for sure. So could you briefly describe like what a day in your job would look like, um, like setting up with patients and all, you know, throughout the entire day, like do you have a lot of demand where it's like constant, constant, do you get some downtime? Uh, what are most PTs hours look like? Um, that kind of like reference. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think it really matters on, on your setting too. You know, some settings are, you know, they're, they're eight to five. And some settings are, you know, more fluctuating uh, schedules. So ours fluctuates a little bit more. Our clinics are open seven to seven. So, you know, we might have somebody that comes in and works seven to four, and then somebody that comes in and works 10 to seven. So it's kind of a, you know, different fluctuation on the time of day, uh, Monday through Friday, usually not the weekends. Uh, but, you know, through your day, it's, yeah, I always say there's a snapshot of time in the clinic. Sometimes it looks like it's you walk in and it's super slow, and then sometimes it looks very busy. And it just really depends on hour to hour, on uh, on what your schedule is like. Because uh, when you're dealing with appointments and schedules, some people uh, come at the wrong time. Sometimes people, you know, don't come in, and so it's you know your your planned day sometimes gets shot pretty quickly. Um, but it is you know, it can be pretty fast paced, you know, it's honestly like you need to, you know, in this, in this field, be, be up and, and available to, you know, to keep, to keep going, you know, and, and not have, there's going to be downtime, but it's not going to be, you know, four hours that you're going to get to be, you know, do whatever, whatever you need to do. So it is, it is, uh, uh, it, I think it's, I think it's pretty fast paced. Do you know what the job um, outlook looks like for PT or PTA? Um, is that something that's currently in need or is it kind of already um, saturated in the market? What does it look like about right now? So I think there's a big need in a lot of places. Um, you know, when you're looking at more desirable areas, Northwest Arkansas is probably a desirable area. You know, maybe it's, you can still find jobs, but it, maybe it's a little harder versus if you're going into more, uh, role settings and things like that. Um, but I think the, the outlook for physical therapy is really good. I think it really, and, you know, since I've been a PT, I think people are using PT more. I think it's, it's one of those things that it's, it's being utilized more as even more research comes out that, uh, you know, just outcomes for, you know, conservative care, like, you know, maybe, maybe you're, um, uh, you're, you're choosing to do physical therapy versus having a surgery of some sort. Um, and so I think, I think as outcomes are, are showing more favorably on that, I think it's, it's even uh, a, a better field to be in. As far as like benefits and things like that, the also physical therapists um, get, uh, could you talk a little bit about that? I know I've talked about my with my students about retirements and things like that. Like, what does that look like um, on the side of like your line of work? 
Yeah. So, I mean, we have, you know, we have all those things like where we're at as well. I can, you know, our company offers, you know, paid time off, uh, 401k match, um, you know, uh, health insurance, you know, all those types of things that, you know, we offer it just like, you know, other companies would, um, and, and probably in a similar manner, I would say, um, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly all the other ones, but, but definitely like all that kind of stuff. I encourage, you know, my PTs to focus on that as well. So, um, so that's definitely benefits or, or something there. Could you maybe think of some jobs um, that maybe people in your field would work with that's maybe not MPT, but you closely work with often, um, or that would be similar in the field uh, that you could maybe describe to them? Mm -hmm. So, you know, any, I would assume that a lot of people that are sitting in here, they may just be looking at healthcare in general or different options. You know, we... You know, people talk about OTs and OTs and PTs, you know, look pretty similar in, in some different settings. Um, and then, you know, I know there's been a lot of students that I've had recently that have been interested in, you know, like uh, physician assistant type programs, um, which is going to be, you know, same, same thing as, as PT. There's a lot of different settings you can be in. You know, it's just because you're a, a physician assistant doesn't mean you're going to work in this specific setting. Um, but it would be, uh, you know, I think a master's degree with that. You know, we work with a lot of uh, physicians, you know, whether that's a primary care doctor, um, whether that's an orthopedic doctor, different things like that, um, that refer physical therapy patients. Um, you know, we work with a lot of um, different ones in the field, like nurse practitioners, uh, things like that. Uh, you know, I think, I think really, you know, if you're looking at the healthcare field, looking at those different options as well is, is also a, a really good uh, comparison that you can do. You know, like what's the setting going to be different? You know, how is it going to look different your day to day? One of the things, you know, I think that physical therapy is unique on is you, you see people consistently for a while and a lot of healthcare, you're, it's not like that necessarily, but we might see people for six to eight weeks pretty consistently and like, you know, a couple times a week or something like that versus, you know, some settings you may see the person one time and never see them again. And so I think that's a really unique, unique thing in this field, um, which is something that I really enjoy myself because then I get to get to really know people. And, uh, uh, but, you know, there's some people pr prefer the other way too. So it's, you know, looking at those different options would be a good, good thing to, to settle on. Um, could you think of any things as a teenager you might not have thought was important for this type of job, but you look back and you say it was absolutely a necessity um, or in high school, you know, what some character traits and things like that where you didn't think were important at the time, but now in your role, you do think is important. Yeah, I think, you know, at, at that age, I mean, some of the stuff that I mentioned earlier, just, you know, finding ways to interact with people, finding ways to, you know, even have a job where you're, where you're learning how to, you know, how to go to work, how to, how to do different things like that. I mean, I think that's important, um, you know, because we talk about there's a, there's a lot of school that's ahead of you, you know, if you, if you cho choose this route, and if you go seven years and you only go to school and then you get out and you start working for the first time, that's, that's challenging sometimes. So um, I think anything that you can do in the service industry, it doesn't have to be healthcare. I think it's helpful. Um, you know, uh, your, your school, you're going to learn some things along the way. You're going to forget a lot along the way and you're going to have to relearn uh, re them later too. So, uh, you know, th that would probably be my recommendation. Okay, we'll give a minute for teachers. If you want to go ahead and type in any more questions, um, we'll kind of open it up to all the ending questions. If you want to go ahead and type those into the chat box for us, um, we'll kind of give a minute um, for that.
So we have a, how stressful can the job be? Depends on the person, I think, on how you handle the stress. But I think it's, you know, it's what I mentioned earlier, it's a snapshot of time. You know, sometimes it seems like it's not stressful at all. And then all of a sudden you have 20 minutes that just everything falls on you at once. So, you know, then it can be kind of stressful, but um, I think there's ebbs and flows. Uh, I, I think it's, it's not incredibly stressful, but I mean, there's, there's definitely moments. Anytime you work with people, you know, you think your day is going to be one way and then, you know, something happens along the way and, and you know, somebody didn't have a, a you, you know, something didn't go as smooth as you thought it was going to the day before. And so um, it, it, it really depends on those things. Um, do you need a certain GPA to graduate with a PT degree? Is GPA important along the way in high school and college? Um, maybe elaborate on GPA. So to be realistic, I think GPA probably does make a big difference on whether you get into PT school or not. Um, does it matter on how good of a PT you're going to be later? I don't know on that part, but it's probably going to um, guide the path whether you get into school or not, and specifically your undergrad GPA. When there's a lot of people that are applying to school and not everybody gets in, that's one of the ways that they uh, essentially weed people out. So, you know, you're gonna you're gonna have to be competitive on your GPA, and and when I mean competitive, some years it's very competitive, and some years it's it's not been. Um, as as competitive so it really depends on the number of of applicants for sure um does your license cross over in all states and do you have to read tests for every state or is there reciprocity in between them so they're uh, they're starting this this thing now it's it's a uh, pt compact so they're starting to have a little bit more carryover between states now. Um, but ultimately each state does have its own licensure and you you can apply for reciprocity as, as well. Um, we have to renew, like for instance, the state of Arkansas, there's a number of uh, continuing education hours that you have to have every two years to, uh, to renew. And so we have to do that. It's not really that big of a deal. Um, I think it's a good thing, you know, it just kind of keeps you current. Um, so there's, there's like a renewal every two years, but if you're going to a different state, you have to go by their guidelines. You have to learn their rules and then apply for licensure. Okay, another question um, is if you are trying to advance up, is there a way to advance in your job or like once you hit your position, you're just kind of there? Like, or is there anything above that, below it? Um, what are some like advancement type situations? So here's, you know, we talk about school and, and what type of education is helpful. I'm sure everybody in all these classes listen to all their teachers all the time and it's very engaged 100% of the time, right? Maybe not, but you know, I think what is fun with PT is like when you're getting into the field and you know, you wanna advance yourself, you could get like a specialty, you could, um, you know, advance yourself in a specific field. Like if you wanted to treat, um, for instance, you know, concussions, we had um, some concussion coursework that we've had because we've had a lot of people that wanted to, to work on that. Uh, you know, you can get uh, a specialization in something like that. And, you know, what's fun about it is like you can advance yourself and instantly use it because you're working with those patients every day. Um, so, you know, we have you know, a lot of our clinicians locally, we've done residency. So um, they got out, they've got their, their, um, their degree, they're a doctor of physical therapy. So they have that, but then they go on and they do a residency program, which is more of a specialist type thing. So it's like more towards um, ours is like a orthopedic type of residency. And it's a, 
that's a one-year program and then they get board certified in in orthopedics and so that's kind of like an advancement like a clinical advancement there um, it helps you with your patients it helps with that sort of thing and then you know then you can also go into you know leadership you can get into more administrative roles different things like that sometimes people want to get into that um, and then also teaching you know um, I've done some teaching like like coursework not necessarily in the schools but you know you can also um, teach different things as well which you know just like to renew your license you have to you have to take courses and things like that so you could teach those courses or you could you know eventually get into a physical therapy school if you wanted to do that and try to teach there so i think there's there's definitely some different ways that you can advance and, and move and change for sure Okay, and then um, what was the most rewarding part of your PT career? Yeah, I mean, I, I think really going back into, you know, if you take, I, I have several patients that stick out over the years, you know, um, some that really stick out to me that was a pretty cool process to see them recover from certain things or did things that they didn't think they could. But, you know, honestly, like there's, there's some of that stuff that happens every day. It's, you know, people that didn't think they could, you know, like I mentioned, just go to the mailbox and that's kind of a fun, rewarding thing. So those things stick out. Um, uh, there's, there's some over the years that definitely stick out more than others, uh, probably, but you know, there's every week, there's something that happens that I think is, is kind of cool. Then we had, can you work within your field while in college or graduate school? Um, so it would be, you know, kind of the setting like, uh, uh, you know, we'd have some people that come in and, and they work as a, a tech or front office, like where they're answering phones, scheduling appointments, you know, um, cleaning, uh, doing different things like that in the clinic. There's a we, we have a lot of uh, pre-physical therapy students that do that. And I think that, you know, you talk about things that, you know, could get you ready for the field. I think it does help a lot because you're, you're interacting with the patients. You're, you're kind of seeing, you know, some treatment approaches that you can kind of fall back on later when you get out of, of school or when you're a student and you're, you're doing your internships and things like that. So that would be the way that you could, you could work in the field as you're in college. And I would encourage, you know, even shadowing and things like that. I mean, I think that's always a good thing. You know, go spend a few hours if you're if you're thinking about going in a direction like this. I mean, it's probably a good idea if you're going to spend seven years of your life going to something to, to actually see what it's like. Okay, um, if we have any last minute questions, um, we'll kind of get close to wrapping up here. Kind of wait for those to come in. Hey, Trevor, is there anything else you can think of to add in or you wanted to cover or add in 
Um, oh, we got a couple more. A specific age group that you work with, or do you get a variety? I know you talked about you could work with pediatrics or geriatrics. Um, what one do you see most in a day, possibly? So we see anywhere, you know, we see probably age 10. We see a lot of adolescents, like, you know, maybe sport related injuries in my setting all the way up to 100, you know. So um, we see a really wide variety of, of ages, you know, and, and the same thing is like, you know, my setting is necks, backs, knees, shoulders, hips, ankles, balance, uh, vestibular and concussion. That's probably kind of like what we see in our setting um, versus, you know, pediatrics, you can see, you know, newborns and, and things like that, but it would be a different setting than kind of what we, you know, personally are focused on. So huge variety of ages for sure um, in our group. And then we had, what was the most difficult part of PT school? <laughs> Mm. So I think it's, I don't, I think it's just hard on the amount of time that you have to spend, you know, studying and, you know, there were some days we were in class for, you know, seven, eight hours a day, and then you're going home and you're studying. So like the length of the day was, was long. Um, it wasn't, you know, was it hard? Yeah, it was hard at times, but it's probably just more your commitment. But I will say personally, as a as a student, that was the first time that I really in, really enjoyed learning, and so um, it it makes it a lot easier when you're enjoying it and you know that you're going to use it. So it's like 100% what I'm learning right now, I'm going to use it later, and so I think that makes it it's a little little easier when you when you're spending all that time studying and you know you're going to have it be useful for you. Um, but it's not easy. It's not easy. I won't say that. But you can do anybody can do it if they really, you know, put the effort into it. Um, this is kind of a weird question, but we see this in the medical field that I'm in. Um, do you think that there's any people that like have aversions to things that shouldn't be wanting to become physical therapists? You're like, oh, if you can't handle this, you probably don't want to go in this field. Um, just different things like that that maybe are related to your field. Yeah, there's there's certain things like that. I, we joke around. My daughter, uh, one, I have a couple of different daughters, and, and so one of them was choking at the table one day, which was really scary. And my other daughter took off running across the room to the other side. It was like, okay, we don't need you in, in, uh, as a first responder here. <laughs> um, but, you know, sometimes people are really scared of needles or or you know, whether that's blood or gross, you know, things like that. And some people love that aspect and they want to be first line. Um, so, but I also think that you can uh, get used to things too. And it becomes easier over time. You know, when you're in PT school, you're, and you go through uh, uh, gross anatomy. So you're, you're working on cadavers and things like that. And so, I mean, we had some people in the class that they had a hard time with that, you know, at first. Uh, but then got over it later, so. Okay, we'll give it one more last minute. And then um, if you had anything else you wanted to add, looks like Miss Prince might be typing one more question she got. Um, we'll take that too. All right, so do you feel most people are cooperative with their treatment plans? Answer is always, it depends, right? <laughs> um, uh, I think most, I think, I think the, uh, and, and this is probably the, one of the tougher parts of the job is like, sometimes you know exactly what's perfect for that person, but getting them to understand that that's what they need is another thing. And so like, like getting that, uh, 
communication on, you know, because like if you have an injury, like sometimes people think that this is, you know, this is what's wrong with me. And when in reality it's, 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 uh, that's not even accurate necessarily, but trying to get that, um, you know, that communication to happen, like, and, and get that response to, you know, the understanding, because you can't just say, you know, that's, that's not correct. You just kind of have to, you know, be persuasive and, and things like that. So if that makes sense at all, um, most people are cooperative. It's just more making sure that you're both meeting, um, you know, the same goals, because, you know, sometimes I have a goal for somebody, they come in and I was like, this is what this per person needs. And then I'll ask them, I was like, so what's your expectations? And they tell me something completely different than what I expected. And, and I think that's where, you know, this expectation comes in for sure. All right, well, I think we can be wrapping it up and um, teachers, if you want to go back to the main breakout room or the main room, uh, we thank you very much for your time today, Trevor, and thank you for talking with all the classes. We've enjoyed speaking with you. Um, Ms. Prince, are you typing one more question or let's see? Oh, no, this is a thank you, I think. <laughs> all right, well.